One night, George Abbott, Rogers and Hart, and Balanchine were trying to figure out what to do with the scene late in the second act that just wasn't working. Adriana, Luciana, and Luz are all alone, and they're tired of being trustworthy, loyal, friendly, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, and reverent. <laughs> Better be a courtesan, a butterfly. How about a songbird, says Rogers and or Hart. How about solving the scene with a song? Why not, said George Abbott. How about writing a trio for all three of them, or a quartet for all five of them? <laughs> Up jumps Balanchine. Trio. Make like song for girl singers like Boswell Sisters, I will stage. Rogers and Hart started to write with their fingers crossed, which is not easy to do. <laughs> Abbott went on to the next scene. Balanchine started to study jitterbugging, trucking, pecking, and Susie queuing, and it worked like a charm. And that's what makes good musical comedy. A merging of top talents, inspiring each other to work their brains to the bone, but enjoying every second of it, to create something that in the end seems easy come, easy go. And this kind of concentrated effort and the joy of it was contributed by all the wonderfully talented people we've talked about tonight. And in addition, Harrigan and Hart, George M. Cohan, Ziegfeld, etc., they helped create the American know-how that tight string that holds it all together, that made musical comedy a purely American, inimitable art form. As for those three ladies, Balanchine did stage them as a takeoff on the Boswell sisters, who were the Andrew sisters of their day, who were the Supremes of their day. And there's hardly a trio which could be more supreme than Kay Ballard, who got three Tony nominations for her one-woman show, and Donna McKechnie and Roberta Peters doing Sing for Your Supper. Folks and crows do lots of things. What the canary only sees. She is a courtesan on wings. So I've heard. Eagles and storks are twice as strong. And you'll get